uh, the introduction. Um, it's my pleasure today to serve as the uh, co-supervisor of Daniele. Um, I'd like to start by first introducing uh, Margarita Pretziva, who's a PhD student from the group, and she will be uh, the one who will introduce in more detail Daniela and his work, as she was her, uh, she was his direct supervisor uh, during this time of the project. Um, yes, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm also welcoming you uh, to uh, Daniele Defense. Um, so Daniele performed his uh, work in the lab of systems and synthetic immunology, uh, where I'm doing a PhD, and we worked closely together on this project, uh, which is about um, improving antigen specific clustering of uh, T cell receptors uh, with the help of deep learning. Um, it's uh, an important challenge in the field of immunology and uh, computational immunology. Um, and uh, yes, Daniela have been working with me for uh, around six months, uh, six, seven months on this project. And um, yeah, you're welcome to start presenting and uh, introduce the results we managed to obtain during this time working on this project. So, thank you very much. If your presentation is over, I uh, will now give floor to Daniele, uh, who will have 20 minutes to, 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 to tell us his results and present his thesis, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, today I'm Daniela, for the people who don't know me, and uh, today I'll be presenting, um, I'll be elaborating on how to improve antigen-specific clustering of uh, materially paired TCRs by a two-second learning model. I want to mention some of the big picture of immunity and the role that T cells have in adaptive immunity specifically. Immunity uh, subdivides into two main branches. The first one, of those being innate immunity, that, that is constituted by inborn defense mechanisms. Uh, that are active at uh, initial stages of exposure to pathogens. Uh, these reactions is unchanged with repeated exposure and uh, develop, develop within minutes to hours after the, the primary exposure. And most important of all, no memory of the previous encounter pathogen is retained by those cells. So the, of immunity is adaptive immunity uh, that, is, uh, that is constituted by two main cell types, the C cells and the B cells. And they specifically recognize uh, antigen components, uh, but that is um, allowed thanks to uh, um, prior activation in the priming, immune priming, that activates these cells against the pathogens uh, that undergo clonal uh, selection and expansion. And uh, for, for, for that, uh, it takes quite a while to develop response. Uh, the, we're talking about days or, or weeks. And most important of all, probably self so same memory of uh, what they encountered, the pathogens they encountered. Also today will be the uh, TCR, TCR receptor is uh, present on the surface of, uh, of uh, T cells. It's considered by a beta or heavier chain in green and lighter alpha chain that cannot directly bind a protein, whole protein, or fragments of it, but they have to be complex into molecular architectures that are called MC. There are two versions of it, MC1. They are different in that they can buy peptides different lengths uh, of a different primary structure. Once they bind TCR, they form a complex that is known as TCR from C. Recognition and priming by the T cell of uh, malignant cells, such as cancer cells or uh, self cells, like such as pancreatic cells, for immune dormance and also for immune activation when they when they bind to uh, other immune cells, like dendritic cells. They become activated and they can exert fully their function. These two chains come to be by a process that is known as BDJ recombination. This process is uh, consists of gene segment rearrangement that rejoining uh, that uh, um, that uh, come together uh, to form the, the two final final chains that appear ultimately on the surface of the T cell, and uh, it it is made to be a uh, It is made, it's kept on the slide, but it, uh, the potential diversity that it, um, of these uh, diverse segments coming coming together is made to be 10 to the power of, of 20. 
And if we zoom in into the risk segment, the variability, the diversity, and joining segments, we may notice that uh, there are also some subregions that are called CDRs or complementary determining regions, uh, one, two, and, uh, and, and three. Um, the, the latter of those, CDR3, is the, the, the most important driving complementarity of TCR to this target peptide or complex PMHC. And uh, it, uh, it may have become apparent by now that there are even part patterns in the amino acid sequence of TCRs, especially in the CDR3 alpha and uh, beta regions uh, after a beta combination that, uh, that allowed the TCR to target to, to bind to the specific PMHC. And uh, arranging this latent grammar would lead a better understanding of uh, disease susceptibility, infection history, and uh, may aid the, the development of no, novel therapeutic TCRs after this. Uh, so grouping TCRs according to their PMC specificity, specificity is uh, maybe framed quantitatively as a clustering task, but it's a challenge. Uh, that is uh, because of the narrow nature of, um, of TCRs, because their responses are high, incredibly diverse and highly specific. Uh, there are many target classics, classes potentially impenetrable PMC targets. Uh, the label TCR data we have is unbalanced and noisy. Uh, Confining the analysis uh, uh, to, the, to the beta chain, I'm sorry, all the Greek letters have escaped for some reason, I don't know why. Um, um, that um, also we have to um, uh, point out that a prior definition of a distance metric in CCR in terms of their CDR region was defined instead of a learned distance metric. It is very important for the discussion to follow. Uh, attempt in cluster retention and consistency, so retention. Is, uh, is a measure of how well um, the, the CR group in the cluster, or the fraction of TCRs that are grouped into clusters. On the left, you can see a high retention uh, diagram, uh, and the clustering diagram, because there's only one outlier. Uh, and on the right, you can see a low retention diagram because there are a whole lot of outliers that are left out of the main recovered cluster. That's your point. The measure of how well a cluster algorithm performs in grouping TCR with the same specificity, class specificity to one cluster, one single cluster. And on the left, we can see that there's an annual outlier, yeah, but uh, on overall, the classes of uh, TCRs that are called by epitope specificity that are specific to one single to one single epitope, one single class. But on, on the right, for example, in the right hand right hand corner. We can see the, um, the, that cluster, that uh, cluster TCR is having uh, each of those uh, different specificity. So this uh, clustering has, for example, low consistency. Uh, in, in that framework, um, machine learning is uh, particularly powerful in uh, a powerful way of interrogating data that it consists of many data points, millions of those, and that is also complex. So it has my number of features. Uh, most important of all, these methods have the potential, the real potential to automate, if manually designed, of course, uh, to automate the process of data knowledge so that uh, it is time efficient and reproducible on new uh, unseen data. Going on, I would like to, to give some direction to supervised and trusted learning and how it may uh, help um, to find a pro to approach a solution to the above mentioned problems. Trusting networks can find similarities and differences between embedded ob objects. So there are the objective is to learn embeddings of um, so that similar objects are clustered together and push far apart from objects that are that have a different label, such as um, for example the triple network, the example of the triple network, similar theory by Schroep et al. Uh, we can cluster any kind of objects such as images of, of dogs uh, and push their embeddings further apart of. Um, an object which is differently labeled, and this has several advantages. One of first, uh, one of those uh, being that distance between learned bags are learned, and not defined a priori, such as was uh, shown in uh, in FaceNet paper, where the images of the same person are clustered together, even if even if different in different conditions of light and exposure and rotation and so on. And this model can be applied to new targets, new classes, and good results can be achieved on uh, a relatively small amount of. Uh, of data in free chain embeddings that are available. I want to apply our this framework to a problem of this interest, we may take label TCRs, label cables, uh, triplets of those, uh, learn informative embeddings, project them into an embedding space, then cluster uh, the TCRs having the same specificity and push for apart this cluster from TCRs having uh, different, different specificity. But can we consider uh, the 
data we have, we, we suppose at the moment, the parallel PCR data, uh, GCF per MHC data is, is sparse and low quality, even from the major source of, uh, of those uh, data, databases. And uh, there are a modern set of count. So we really uh, can't tackle this problem directly, but we may forget for a moment tables and take the largest, larger amount of, of um, data point of the data we have with PCRs then find informative embeddings just for PCRs. And uh, then we introduce, reintroduce the label, we fine tune the, these embeddings, and then we can adopt the triple network approach. Uh, so this is the, the rough idea, uh, we'll elaborate on further. Uh, so we use as an intermediate network, the orange one used in the previous slide, a, a variational audio encoder. That's what explain the architecture we have, uh, we have trained. Um, the first one of those being a deep neural network, vanilla neural, vanilla BAE, uh, that is consists of a deep neural network, uh, consists of fully connected layers, uh, that is symmetrical. There's the, the first part, uh, the one on the left, so before the, the so-called bottleneck that is uh, the encoder, that finds a compressed, yet informative representation of the initial input X, that is Z, and then from Z, uh, we uh, wish to reconstruct the initial input X hat, uh, so that the reconstruction loss between X hat and hex is uh, uh, as minimal as possible. Uh, so that is the objective uh, that can be achieved. That is the CNN. The CNN has several advantages over uh, the fully connected uh, layers, such as the, it, it, it can automatically detect features that by taking advantage of a property in input that is called local spatial coherence. It's computationally very efficient and can capture increasing level of, of uh, uh, complexity via the application of multiple fiber and objective is exactly the same. We covered this later in presentation Z, that is a bottleneck. Results, I know they skipped, so uh, we, I, I'll try to describe as um, as, best as, as I can, uh, like the, 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 the letters have, uh, like, uh, I've done. Uh, uh, so we used uh, two uh, data sets, the first one of those being a single chair data set and a pair chain data, uh, data set uh, consisting of uh, Large, large condition of uh, alpha and beta chains, and the first one consisting of uh, beta chains only, and we developed eight models for the pair chain uh, data uh, that uh, uh, consists of four vanilla and four uh, CNN VAEs uh, on four different forms of input. So they are alpha, so they are three beta, they can candidate it to two chains, and uh, including also the thermal and GNB allele labels. And four models, two vanilla, two VAE, two CNN VAE uh, on, uh, on single chain data. Then uh, we uh, visualize the layer space uh, by the length, by, by yeah, vanilla and CNN VAE. So the first, the first column is the length of a CDR, is length of CDR3 alpha. The second is uh, beta, and the third is the concatenation of alpha and beta. And uh, we can see there's a field structure in the in the vanilla, while there's not in the CNN. Uh, but uh, this was not our major concern. That was instead the reconstruction accuracy on the inputs. So we can see there that uh, the reconstruction accuracy is uh, um, very, the reconstruction is very accurate for the CNMDA model. That is about 98% across all the splits and uh, uh, it's slightly lower for the vanilla VAE that is uh, above 92% by still a good reconstruction accuracy. And this is valid for both per chain and single chain models. Then we took from the test set uh, sequences that are 85 to 70 percent similar to those finding the training sets, and uh, we observed that the CNN is uh, way more robust in um, keeping the reconstruction accuracy high uh, on more and more dissimilar sequences. Uh, that is not the case for the vanilla, and specifically the, the CNN, the, the, the model condition of uh, concatenation of the alpha and beta chain, the CDR3 alpha beta, is the, is the best uh, in terms of robustness, and this is uh, valid for the first chain and single chain model. Uh, we've uh, looked at uh, reconstruction accuracy on label TCR data, and, um, and we uh, applied these our two two best performing models. Uh, that is a CDR3 alpha beta, CDR3 alpha beta plus, including the the, um, the, the German GMB allele labels on uh, three Miran data, data sets on from the left, and the one human data set. And uh, while the CDR alpha beta is consistently performing um, not above 90, 95, 98 percent for, for, both, for both, both models, we can recover uh, as much as high perception accuracy on the model, including the, the German jelly labels, because the murine uh, genes are quite different from the, the human sequences, which the model was trained on. 
Also, we've uh, okay. So I'll briefly explain. Um, mm. So we attempted to to cluster uh, the um, the row via E embeddings uh, by uh, four metrics that, is, that are purity, homogeneity, completeness, uh, v score, and AMI. Uh, so the, the the purity is uh, a measure of uh, is I when uh, uh, the cluster contain only members of a single or a single class. Uh, the completeness is high when all the members of a single class get grouped into one single cluster. V score is harmonic, meaning of the previous two metrics, and the AMI is just a normalized group that takes a full advantage of the, the, the range uh, that is uh, defined on from 0 to, to, to 1. And we've uh, seen by applying DB scan and K means uh, to popular cluster algorithms that uh, the performance in those metrics are really poor, as you can see, because DB scan is the phase to, to, to capture. Uh, fails uh, class classify the majority of uh, data points as uh, outliers, and k means fail to capture beyond neighborhoods a bit of specificities in the late, low row data. Late. So we uh, proceeded with the uh, triple network clustering. Just for that, so the, the data set I showed you before, so three Morang data sets, one from VDJ, DB, and, uh, and, and two generated in-house data sets, uh, and one human data set. And as our intermediate network, pre trained network, we use the CDR3 alpha beta uh, CNN uh, VA, our best performing model of it. And uh, this is a sketch of a, of a triple network. What, what it does is taking pairs of uh, TCRs and PMC and, uh, and triplets of uh, TCR PMC, and uh, of those, a pair at the same label, so label A in this case. And we can uh, by uh, our, by our, our pre trained network, by a later representation of the of the TCR, um, that is uh, that is labeled by the PMC specificity, project them into an embedding space, uh, and then contrast the positive pair that is constituted by the anchor and the positive of the same label to the negative uh, exemplar uh, that is a red one. And in the learning step, the distance between the anchor and the positive of the same label uh, is uh, minimized, uh, while the distance in the anchor and the negative is maximized by certain margin. And these are this is what happens when we did that on the VA row encodings and the VA uh, mm, row encodings prior to the triple network on the left. And then we we've uh, we've seen that uh, the specificities uh, are fully recovered after after the training for all epitopes in, uh, in questions in question. Uh, that the same happens in human human data sets, uh, even though the number of peptides, uh, th these TCRs are, re are directed towards is uh, way higher, uh, but a network is able to recover your know, clusters. Uh, question to um, the conclusion, what do we achieve? And actually, our VA models are both uh, good um, to um, at reconstructing uh, label TCR sequences that uh, and to generalize with most 70% uh, to, to signal that are most 70 percent similar to those in the training set, but also able to cluster sequences that are uh, they belong to independent da da data sets such as VDJDB and uh, in our data. And our CNN VAE model generalizes better than the, the vanilla VAE. And on label TCR PNC pairs, this the triple neural network can reshape the latent manifolds so as to group. Uh, TCRs having the same specificity uh, to uh, and to train them to have similar embeddings. Or maybe the most important slide of the, this presentation in our perspective, because this much more work is uh, is to be done. Um, because the despite uh, this sequence being finally tuned on TCR PMC data, uh, we 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 have tuned these embeddings. Uh, uh, we, we expect these embeddings to be strongly over overfitted to. Uh, on a relatively low numbers of, uh, of data points we have. Uh, for that, we aim to uh, build up a high, higher quality and balance uh, label TCR data sets uh, from public sources uh, to, to, contribute to, to contribute and assess properly the generalizability of our, of our model. And to the test uh, set, we comprise new TCRs, having the same epitope specificity as uh, the, those in the training sets, and new TCR, new TCR sequences having directed towards epitopes that are not uh, pressing our training training set to assess the, pre the the predictive power of our model to novel specificities. I also would like to uh, thank all the members of the Radi group for having um, given me this uh, amazing opportunity to to work closely with a hands on pro with an hands on project on uh, machine learning. Your thanks go to Margarita, um, Ocean, which is uh, 
uh, a um, my, my my fellow that uh, we 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 working closely uh, with uh, for a limited amount of time on this project, uh, and the other members of the computational sub subgroup for the insightful and stimulating discussion of uh, of ideas. Uh, I would like to to thank the um, the scuola the scuola for uh, everything has uh, given to me and uh, and for everybody involved in my my path. And during my time here at the school, uh, and all of you guys were part of something, and uh, do not forget that. Uh, and uh, I would like to personally thank Pietro uh, Mazzaglia uh, for the useful uh, tips that's given to me every uh, every time I ask, even even <laughs> late night. Uh, so that's uh, that's all. Website. Thank you very much, Daniele. Thank you. So uh, it's now time to give floor to uh, to the opponent, uh, Anna Weber, uh, who will lead uh, the discussion. Please, Anna. Thank you. And first of all, uh, thank you, Daniele, for a really interesting presentation um, and uh, a really relevant thesis. I think I um, I really liked it. Um, I'm working on a kind of similar topic, so um, I know how how important it is. Um, and yeah. Um, so let me ask you a few questions. Um, so um, first of all, what well, I was wondering when I um, look at your results, you show some really nice T-SNEED plots, right, in the um, in the end, where you can really see that um, after the fine tuning, you get um, clusters that seem to be very specific to an epitope. However, you, you didn't show any metrics anymore, right? Um, could you? How could you maybe assess? the new clustering um, a bit more qualitatively. Uh, so th that one I showed you is a, a qualitative assessment of um, a visual assessment of uh, results that we got, that we got. But the, the plan is to, so the objective of contrasting network is to take these data points and make them more separable in the later manifold. Uh, so uh, the objective would be to uh, make this model generalizable, first of all, on a validation data set, the proper one. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, separate, uh, um, and then evaluate the same metric as purity, homogeneity, uh, that is the same thing, uh, the co completeness, uh, v-score, and AMI on uh, on uh, the, the the validation data set uh, that we are to uh, are to put together uh, still. So we uh, generally, uh, for interest of time, we didn't uh, have time to quantitatively assess by those metrics uh, uh, the. <laughs> The quality of clustering, and uh, reason one reason for that is that we had only a, a training set that is uh, at least unbalanced. Uh, so, so yeah, for that, that was the, the main reason we did that. But we plan to do that, so, of course. So, so is there is there a specific reason why you didn't split the data set that you have, and then just use maybe ten percent of it as the validation data set? Yeah, uh, we we did that, and uh, but um, these uh, these these data points that you shown in, on the Miran data set are less than seven hundred. So we split it with a ten percent validation data set. I I did not show the the result there, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but but still uh, that doesn't that doesn't really allow to assess generalizability of the model because um, the low number of data points does not um, allow to um, to to group to 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 bin into the validation data set uh, some TCRs that are specific to a given epitope in that data set. So it may happen that in the validation we have uh, uh, we have uh, we, we have not all the epitope present, uh, and that that might hinder the results. And uh, uh, I personally looked at that, and uh, it's not that this got the the short answer is that he, that uh, he, he does not guarantee generalizability of uh, of the model. But yeah, we we, we tried. To split even with low numbers. Can you tell me what it, what roughly these results look like? If you did it, I mean, that's, it's really interesting. Um, even um, if I mean, you're right that with at least low numbers, it's not going to be that. Um, yeah, you, you can't uh, make that much statement. But um, what what was the trend? Uh, so um, actually, we did uh, something um, slightly more more refined after the submission of the thesis of the work. Uh, we actually left out entire epitopes. Just from the same data set, uh, and uh, those were were uh, were left for validation, um, and then we've uh, we've uh, tried to we train a model on the on only a limited number of epitopes. I'm talking about just yes, for simplicity, talk, let's talk about neuron data sets. Uh, 
Um, and then we've, uh, after, after, after training, uh, we have observed how the model is able to cluster uh, the, the data points and the validation that are totally different epitopes. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I was able to cluster, but uh, on, only to, to visual user evaluation. I actually have a, a hidden slide. That, can, can I show this there, Giuseppe? Can Sorry? I show there? Just please. I, I don't know if... Uh, Who's that? I can do that, so probably. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, can you see that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so actually, what uh, what is shown here um, is uh, when a model is trained on all the epitopes in the Mirai datasets, but the one circled in red. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but it's a, this is a slight modification to the architecture um, I've written about in the, in the thesis uh, because we've attached on top of the convolutional pre-training network um, some additional layers that. Uh, could um, capture the um, re refine, uh, fine tune our embeddings uh, in that uh, these are dedicated to uh, separating uh, on the grounds of epidospecificity, separating the on the grounds of epidospecificity. And that, can you see the, the mouse? Mm -hmm. this, is, yep. uh, this, is, this is, these are test data points in that the model has not, has not seen them. Um, these are clustered, uh, um, well, uh, this is a UMAP is not Disney. Um, um, because um, the reason for UMAP is primarily because the last uh, the last number of nodes in the um, in the attached um, network on uh, on top of the uh, the pre-trained network um, has uh, 256 dimensions. Uh, so we may uh, I, I may have uh, feared that uh, a curse of uh, dimensional alignment happens. Uh, so UMAP is uh, is better uh, for high dimensional uh, inputs uh, than TISNI. Uh, so I use UMAP, map yeah, by, by the way. Um, while the this epitope, the, the radish one, is not uh, is not does not look as good as uh, the, the yellow the yellow one. But uh, what what happens most frequently is that uh, in the later manifold, uh, the epitopes that are part of the test sets um, are grouped into one single cluster. As the model does not know what to, what epitope specificities to give to them, uh, does not know which, which class they belong to. They be captures the model captures that they belong to a different class, but uh, not separate ones. So this is a uh, I, I think I, I think it is personally very interesting. I, I do not have uh, yet an explanation for that. May, probably the small amount of data, uh, but uh, <laughs> I think that's a, a kind of a getaway. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. It's, I found it interesting. I wanted to show. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Thanks for showing this um, hidden slide. Um, yeah, and I find it. I find it very um, interesting that you actually managed to at least one of the epitopes. I mean, yeah. does look like it forms a cluster, right? Um, which is already good to be able to generalize to one more epitope if you've just trained on six different ones. So um, yeah. I'm actually impressed by that. <laughs> yeah, really nice, really nice. It is. Um, yeah. So another question that I had was, why did you specifically choose chose to do a two-step approach? Right, you first um, train an embedding that is good at, at reconstructing the T cell receptors, and then you refine it so it separates by epitope specificity. Couldn't you have done it um, immediately with the contrastive learning um, to uh, arrive at this specificity separation um, from the start. Why this um, first step? Uh, this would have been really nice to do, uh, but uh, the data we have on labeled PCRs was very poor as cars. Uh, and then the, the, the number of data points in uh, BDJ database is our main source of uh, labeled data, uh, appears to be um, reasonably good, 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 good numbers. Uh, but many of those are quality zero, and uh, they say that for quality zero, uh, we have no reliability in uh, in binding, uh, in the binding quality. So we cannot use directly those TCRs to learn informative embeddings. It, it would have been, so we use the TCRs only for which we have a larger amount of data, a uh, more qualitative one, especially paired data uh, that is uh, very, very high, high quality. Uh, 
and um, and we, we find a we, we we learn a later presentation of those TC, TCRs on larger amount of data to be able to generalize to make our uh, model generalizable at least a pre-trained model uh, to to any TCR of interest. So up to now we we uh, confident that uh, the the network we've uh, we've learned the pre-trained one uh, can can generalize and reconstruct well. Uh, a, a large um, wide wide possibility wide wide uh, array of possible input uh, TCRs, as is shown also in uh, the reconstruction accuracy on a completely independent data data sets that is the paired um, data sets. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would have been uh, really uh, interesting. Anya, president to work uh, with uh, with paired data. I may uh, for, for example. Per uh, we, if we um, add to, yeah, we, we can integrate. We, we thought of integrating the uh, labeled um, TCR datasets um, with um, um, the, the TCRs uh, and uh, find a, a complete uh, representation of the TCR PMC pair. To, to, to oh, we need more and more good data of uh, of it. It's uh, likely that uh, it will be overfitted. Mm -hmm. And uh, and is the reconstruction um, still good after you find it? So did you right, did you train a decoder to reconstruct the TCR receptor sequences from the fine-tuned space as well? So does that still work? Uh, no, I, we um, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, we think um, that uh, to you your question was. Uh, um, how the the reshaped embeddings are able to reconstruct the initial inputs, right? Yeah. Ah, um, so uh, we didn't we didn't look at that, uh, but I have the impression um, that when since it it's likely to be over overfitted on the low numbers of the per data, uh, it, it the, the reconstruction uh, will not be as as good as uh, it was initially. Uh, so I have uh, this this impression, but uh, we we didn't look yeah. at that. Yeah, because I'm wondering I'm wondering also like how much um, are you changing the latent space through the fine tuning? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah will, if yeah. you, yeah, yeah, because basically um, since you're optimizing there on a very different um, objective, right? Um, it can very well be that you're basically breaking <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, I, 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 um, yeah, I agree with, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll be interesting to look at uh, into this. So we would uh, interfere with this. Have to disable the microphone. But I also made a mistake and disabled Anna's microphone. Now you should, you should be able to, to to speak if you want. Oh right. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. I made a mistake. Okay. Please um, you. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, since your ultimate goal was to um, cluster the sequences and not to reconstruct or to generate new sequences or anything, I think it would also be fine probably if you broke it. Um, but um, I'm also wondering if if it could have worked to directly do the um, uh, the learning, um, the contrastive learning, just on the few sequences, because um, I think, yeah, I think you might have um, achieved at least separability um, as we see it here of, on these few epitopes that we have in the training data. Um, but yeah, but um, I mean, there's always uh, a number of interesting uh, analysis that you could also do, but uh, limited time. So um, yeah. Um, let me see what else I've wrote down. Ah, um, oh, right. So one one thing I wondered um, when I saw the reconstruction um, scores that you have, um, and you showed that you for the uh, VJ segments you get uh, lower scores for the murine sequences, right? Because you pre-trained with human sequences. Um, and then wondered why? What did you choose to do that? Like you have more labeled data on murine data sets. Why not focus on murine TCRs also for the first step for the um, reconstruction? Uh, so, give me this uh, structure accuracy uh, metrics. Yeah. 
Uh, so the question was, why didn't we focus on primarily on urine sequences? Yep. For evaluating reconstruction accuracy? Not for not just for evaluating, but also for training. Um, oh. Is there no, aren't there enough murine sequences available? Oh, yeah, that is exactly the case. Uh, oh. So the, the larger body of data we had uh, um, consisted of uh, human sequences. And since we wanted to have a large number of paired sequences uh, mm -hmm. that we found on, on a, a study, and the author kindly provided uh, that with, uh, kindly provided us with, uh, with its data. Uh, th th those were consisting of uh, um, human sequences. So that, that, that is the case, and we seem to observe that uh, our, the model that takes into account the uh, germline, uh, the DJ genes uh, performed uh, worse. But, uh, that, that yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sad, because like, I would have expected that there are probably also enough unlabeled murine sequences, <laughs> um, but yeah, then maybe not then. I would expect this as well, but for the pair chain TCRs, it's actually not the case. Uh, maybe for yeah. some Pain, but not for the chain. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, okay. Right. And did you, no, you didn't, right? Um, do the con um, contrastive learning part also just with single chain? Uh, right. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. Uh, for, for single single chain, but the, the, the results are not, um, they're not, uh, not, not that, that better. Um, I mean, the, the, I, I may say, uh, and I'm confident to say, actually, that uh, the, the, the row VA embeddings uh, looks uh, nicer, look nicer. Uh, I'm talking about these, these row embeddings here. Uh, so they, they, they kind of clustered in, um, in, some, in some way, just initially. This is, this is paired. Uh, but uh, for the the single screen data, the, it, it it looks um, nicer, a bit, a bit nicer. Um, but the, there is not that much of a quantitative difference. Also on the on the clustering metrics on the row um, encodings, uh, so that is we are on we're, we're there. Sorry, so so the single chain data looks better. Uh, the single the chain looks data looks. Uh, to visual inspection looks nicer. Uh, the row, the row encodings, <laughs> not the the pre the pre training or pre training of the trigger neural network, uh, but in terms of um, of uh, clustering of evaluation of clustering metrics, as I've shown where where the issue was. Yeah, here. Uh, in terms of, in terms of these uh, with DB scan and KMEs, uh, this is not a much of a difference. Yeah, we we we've, uh, we'll uh, also try to. With single chains, especially beta chains, but because we had much more more data for those. Yeah. Okay, but so you would say that it is also worth pursuing this with single chain data. It's yeah, not it, significantly worse than the paired. Yeah, it could work. Yeah, it could work. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm um, just wondering. Alpha alpha chain. It doesn't appear to be that good, but because uh, because we have very very few data points for the alpha chain. Compared to the beta beta chains, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, all the problems that come along with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. I think that was all the questions that I had. Um. Thanks very much, Danielle, for um answering all of them. Um, any question from you, Giuseppe? I think. Thank you, you said for your for so. the discussion. Is there any comment or uh, statement from uh, or, or on behalf of the supervisors? Not questions, as I've said. Uh, your your supervisors are not entitled to make questions, but if you want to make any comment, please. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll start. Uh, thank you, Daniela, for a very good presentation and for the excellent work in the group. Um, and of course, also thank you to uh, Margarita for uh, supervising Daniele and um, working closely together on this project. And I agree with uh, what Anna mentioned earlier. It's a very important uh, topic, a very challenging one, and one that I think is only at the very early stages of the field. So 
uh, there would be many opportunities and learnings from uh, these types of um, you know, steps forward. So I'm excited and happy to see the progress that Daniela was able to make in this time. Thank you, Margarita. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I also enjoyed the presentation a lot and the discussion. Um, I guess I can, I mean, I'd like to comment a bit more on the marine data sets. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can also do it after, but um, I guess um, like also working with marine data sets, uh, if you look at the application of a tool developed downstream, uh, I think like working with human data sets would be also an advantage uh, because it can lead to uh, more high applicational value afterwards and also, uh, I mean, obviously beta chain, uh, zero free beta chain, I mean, contains a lot of information, but also a pair chain data set contains um, higher value for the industry or like high applications because often pairing alpha and beta chain together can cause some problems. Uh, like the specificity of TCRs can change um, depending on the pairing. So it's also, yeah, it's like another advantage of this uh, work with paired data sets like you already have on both chains and you don't um, need to combine them afterwards. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation and for the questions. I think they were really interesting. Um, yeah, and thanks a lot for introducing to chairing uh, with defense. Um, yeah. Thank you. So if there are no more questions on behalf of uh, Anna, I would like uh, all the people inside the classroom to move outside and leave the commission to assess the outcome of the examination and also the candidate, of course. And all of us, we should move to the uh, private room, if you don't mind.